So uh, we have a question from uh, a viewer about education generally, and I'm going to go to you, Senator Putnam, first, because I think what we're dealing with here is a concern about uh, what I would call K-12. It's now pre-K to 12, and whether or not there will be additional uh, dollars appropriated this year. And of course, this is typically not a funding year, but of course, there is the surplus question. Uh, and this viewer is wondering whether or not some of that money might filter down to uh, school districts uh, more generally. So let's start with you, Senator Putnam. We'll go around our virtual table. Floor is yours. Sure. Thank you, Barry. And uh, thank you to the to the watcher who submitted this question, because I think there are a few things that are more important than public education. Um, you know, uh, it's it's the path to the middle class. It's the path to improving your lives. It's the path to becoming a good citizen. That's why we have public schools is not just to get people jobs, but to make them into good citizens. And so a few things are more important uh, than uh, education. Um, uh, you did, I think it was appropriate for you to say it's over E12 instead of K12, because we're also talking about early childhood education, where it's a space where if we invest in that as a state, the return on that investment is phenomenal. If we take care of kids when they're really younger, uh, it, it's, a, it's a, a, the appropriate and right time to, to put them on the right path. So uh, in terms of like actual resources coming to the schools, I expect that there will be some. I'm not entirely sure where it's going to go and where I can tell you where I'd like it to go, though. Um, I would like to see that investment in early childhood education, um, but also coupled with a greater investment in uh, mental health concerns and counseling. You know, this is a, a fact that everybody knows. We've heard a million times over and over again that Minnesota has the fourth worst ratio of uh, guidance counselors to students in the country. Um, and when you add in uh, school social workers and psychologists, we're actually the worst in the country. Um, and that's pre-COVID. Um, it's hard to be a young person these days. And with so many of the issues people are struggling with, there's this, this current of nihilism where, where, where young people don't believe in anything. They're not a, they, they don't have the support to do the things that they can uh, eventually do. We need more grownups in the buildings to serve as mentors, to help young people become active, contributing members of society, healthy-minded citizens. Uh, so that's where I'd like to see it go. Um, I'm not entirely sure what kinds of resources are likely to be articulated to E12 education, but I do hope there's some. So Representative Igo, your thoughts? Yeah, you know, um, this is a, a subject, you know, what I don't serve on an education committee, but it, it's a subject that's close to home for me. And I, I think that personally comes from my family experience. Uh, my youngest brother um, graduated high school and started his college experience in the middle of COVID. Um, having conversations with him and his friends who are like brothers to me. Um, I really saw firsthand how that affected them. And, you know, going back to my high school and talking to my old teachers, um, kind of giving me some ideas of where that, you know, if we're going to appropriate money to education to help. And um, the idea that I really come with, and, and, you know, Senator Putnam, you kind of mentioned this in your last question, you know, taking um, some leadership and that political courage. I think the biggest thing here is creating programs that are going to create um, hands up for educational policy rather than a, a one-time handout, right? I mean, it's really easy to say, we're gonna write a check for $150 million to all of our school districts and poof, the money's gone, that's taxpayer dollars disappeared forever. And maybe it made a difference for that year to help balance the budget. But I think we really wanna start making change and whether that be mental health for the next generation, whether it be more teachers, whether it be helping to create more diversified programs um, in, in the trades or, or career paths, we need to create a, a bill and policy that's gonna get hands up to local school districts to allow them to work together to share ideas and to really get that money to be used to make students lives better uh, and, and make the next generation better and you know it's the line that i use with my constituents and i really believe in bring our best days to reality representative uh, laws willard yeah so i i think uh senator putnam stole a little my thunder there with the early education stuff but that's uh that's a big an area that i think is is a really important and investment that is in and fact sort of the real house that's that's a place that <laughs> it you, is. you know a yeah, great deal about I that return your thunder. i return your thunder to you yeah it, thank you um i i just watched the movie thor so that's really important to me that i have my thunder back <laughs> um anyways um so i think i think early education is really important um i think uh, Senator Put Putnam mentioned the the return on investment on that is huge, um, and it's really vital that we address that th those issues and and sort of what we're seeing there on the early education part. I would also say a uh, cross subsidy for special education is a huge one that I'm hearing about from the districts in my uh, in my communities, and so I think um, that's the essentially the gap between what the state uh, and the federal governments um, cover for special education services mandated by the government that school districts provide them. 
Um, and this is a huge expense for a lot of districts across the state. And so that's one thing that I think um, we've had agreement on in the past, and I would love to see us uh, continue to, to work to minimize the gaps and to be able to provide the Senator Rood. Well, Representative Waslewick, I love the fact that you always, I can tell you work with children because you always say my kiddos. And I, <laughs> I just, I just, I just love that. I think that's just, uh, that's, that's very nice. Anyway, um, so last year we made the largest investment in uh, Minnesota schools in the history of Minnesota and uh, with very little mandates. So I'm not thinking that we're looking at a big spending package. I probably look at some things that happened in COVID that the schools know, need help with. But when I talk to my superintendents, they're saying, you know, money isn't the solution to end everything. And what we'd really like is more local control of our schools. My superintendents know their schools. They know what their community needs. And so they're asking to take off uh, mandates and they, they have a list of mandates that they would like to see go away that um, makes it easier for them to run their schools because they're not Minneapolis schools, uh, they're greater Minnesota schools and they're usually pretty small community schools. And uh, like Representative Igo says, um, we know our kids, um, the community knows our kids and I think our superintendents know best what the children in that district need. So I, I'm looking more for taking off uh, mandates for our schools um, than just throwing funding at them. 